Among professions that are typically associated with trust and respect, the medical profession holds a unique place. Doctors are often seen as guardians of our health, but not every story about them is praiseworthy. The world's most dangerous doctors is an in-depth look at those who have betrayed their Hippocratic oath. In this film, we will visit the dark corners of medicine where treatment turns into manipulation and care for patients gives way to crimes and moral degeneration. We will learn about those who use their knowledge and position not for healing, but for causing harm, sowing fear and suffering instead of relief and hope. Walter Freeman was a controversial figure in the history of medicine, particularly known for his methods of treating mental illnesses, especially lobotomies. Born in 1895, Freeman gained fame and a notorious reputation for his method called prefrontal lobotomy, which he popularized in the United States. Lobotomy, though now considered barbaric and unethical, was at the time seen as a groundbreaking method for treating severe mental disorders such as schizophrenia, severe depression, or mania. Freeman, inspired by the work of Portuguese neurologist Egas Muniz, who introduced lobotomy as a treatment method, adapted the technique to his own needs, creating the so-called transorbital lobotomy, also known as ice-pick lobotomy. This method was faster and less invasive than traditional lobotomy, but also more brutal and risky. Despite initial enthusiasm and positive reviews, over time, evidence of serious side effects and long-term impairments caused by lobotomy in patients began to emerge. Many who underwent this procedure experienced significant cognitive, emotional, and social impairments. Some cases, as noted, even ended in death. An interesting aspect of Freeman's career was his personality and approach to work. His flamboyant style and penchant for public demonstrations led some critics to describe him more as a showman than a qualified surgeon. In times when medicine was far from current ethical standards, Freeman undoubtedly had a significant impact on the development of neurosurgery, though his methods and approach are now considered unacceptable. His career and work methods became a symbol of both innovation and a warning against excessive enthusiasm in science without proper consideration of ethics and patient safety. The decline in the popularity of lobotomies, which occurred in the 1950s and 60s, partly due to the development of more effective and safer psychiatric medications, ultimately ended the era of lobotomy as an acceptable method of treating mental disorders. Walter Freeman died in 1972, leaving behind a complex legacy in the history of medicine. Marcel Petiot, also known as Captain Valéry, was one of the most dark and controversial figures in France in the first half of the 20th century. His story intersects with crime, medicine, and politics, making him an incredibly complex and tragic figure. His difficult childhood, educational problems, and epilepsy may have influenced his later life and decisions. Completing a short medical course and starting work at a psychiatric clinic gave him access to a vulnerable group of people whom he could exploit. After moving to Paris, Patio opened a private practice where he seemingly engaged in borderline legal activities including performing illegal abortions. His first victim, Louise Delaveau, was likely met during this period. Her disappearance in 1926 was one of the first alarming signals concerning his activities. However, it was during World War II that Petio most revealed his dark side. Exploiting the chaos of war, he began to attract victims under the guise of helping them escape the Nazis. The tragic discovery of human remains in his house in 1944 revealed the terrible truth about his actions. His attempt to use the political situation to cover up his crimes, claiming the bodies belonged to Germans killed by the resistance, was cunning 
but ultimately ineffective. The investigation revealed that Petio was responsible for the death of at least 26 people, although the actual number of his victims may be much higher. His abuse of the doctor's position to commit crimes was particularly shocking and ultimately led to his conviction. Petio's execution by guillotine in 1946 ended his bloody activity, but his story remains a warning against the dangers that can arise from the abuse of power and trust, especially in a profession as delicate as medicine. Marcel Petiot's figure is often mentioned in discussions about medical ethics and criminology, and his story continues to fascinate and terrify to this day. Michael Swango is a figure that serves as a warning about the dangers that can arise from the abuse of trust in medical professions. His story is both shocking and tragic with his actions having catastrophic consequences for many innocent people. Born in 1954, Swango initially seemed to be a promising doctor. However, disturbing signals began to appear early in his career at Rhodes Hall. His carelessness and secrecy were the first warning signs. Moreover, Nurses at the hospital started to notice a pattern of troubling deaths among Swango's patients. His expulsion from the hospital after his internship did not stop him from continuing to work in healthcare. Transitioning to an emergency medical technician only deepened his obsession with death and dying. Over the years, Swango carried out his dark activities, injecting patients with unknown substances leading to their deaths. Estimates suggesting that he might have been involved in around 60 murders highlight the scale of his criminal actions. Excerpts from his notebook, read by the police, revealed the terrifying truth about his psyche and attitude towards his actions. The fact that he derived pleasure from inflicting pain and death is particularly disturbing and indicative of deep psychological disorders. Swango's eventual sentencing to three life terms in 2000 and his placement in one of the world's most secure prisons, ADX Florence in Colorado, marks the end of his tragic and dangerous career. His story is a reminder that in healthcare professions where trust and responsibility are paramount, abuses can have deadly consequences. Swango remains one of the most notorious criminals in the history of the American healthcare system. Carl Klauberg shockingly represents the dark side of medicine and science during World War II. His actions in German concentration camps serve as a grim reminder of the horrific crimes against humanity committed during that era. As a gynecologist, Klauberg used his knowledge and skills in the most cruel way conducting sterilization experiments on concentration camp prisoners, primarily Jewish women and Romani women. His methods were not only cruel, but also completely devoid of ethical medical standards. The sterilization procedures he conducted without anesthesia caused immense suffering and often the death of the victims. Klauberg developed a technique for non-surgical sterilization which involved injecting an irritating pharmacological agent into the female reproductive organs. This method, under the guise of routine gynecological examinations, was in reality a brutal and inhumane experiment. These procedures aim to cause inflammation and result in infertility. After the war, Klauberg was captured and sentenced to 25 years in prison but he only spent 10 years behind bars before being granted amnesty. His lack of remorse and pride in his scientific achievements further underscore his cruelty and lack of empathy. Another planned trial against Klauberg did not take place due to his death in 1957, 